Hello, everybody. Welcome all to K Drama School. I'm your host, Grace Jung. How are you? You guys, it is very hot here in Madison, Wisconsin. I am officially moved into my new place. It is、uh, perfectly suitable for me, just me. And、uh, things are slowly coming together. Yeah, I am going to estate sales, I am going to antique shops. I am going to Target. I am going to all the places to get the things that I need in order to live. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how much stuff a person needs. And it's absurd. Like, I, it's actually kind of embarrassing. It's really ridiculous. Like, when I think about the amount of stuff that I threw out. In Los Angeles before I came here, and then the amount of stuff I'm currently acquiring and accumulating in order to make up for the things that I gave up, it just makes me feel like nothing but a wasteful consumer, you know? But what are you gonna do? Like, this is, this is how it goes. This is where it's at. This is what we're doing. This is why we're here. I need to get the things that I need in order to live, right? In order to live the life that I wanna live. Hmm? It's so strange though. I, I do feel ridiculous. Like, how would a person in India, you know, judge this lifestyle? Like, I'm not talking just anybody in India, but I mean, like, a person who lives as a saint on the street. Like, how would that person regard my life? You know? Because I, I am in part that being, and I'm looking at my life and I am judging it. Maybe they would say, don't judge it. I was re watching a movie that I love called A Serious Man. It's by the Coen Brothers. Came out in 2009, I believe. And I watched this film when I was in Seoul as a Fulbright scholar. And I watched the film. It was like Apple, iTunes, like download to rent. And then I re watched it again. And then I watched it one more time because it was like a film with. Such profound depth, but in the most simplistic way. And I thought I didn't understand it the first time around. So I had to watch it again. And then I had to watch it again. And it's ridiculous how many times I doubted my own intellect. But you know what helps? Like, I thought the movie was bad. I think that's why I was re watching it. I was like, how could this movie be bad? It's by the Coens. Like, it shouldn't be bad. But then I re watch it. I'm like, I still don't know how I feel about it. And then I read Manola Dargis's New York Times film review on the, on the film, and it was making so much sense to me now. I was like, oh, this is what it's about. And at now, pre- present day, I don't even know what it is that I read from Manola Dargis's review. I know nothing about it. I was re watching this film just from like the POV of the absurdity, the absurdity and the uncertainty of life. In fact, you could even go so far as to say it's the cynicism of it, but it's not. Like, if you think of it from the point of view of like Kabbalah or like, you know, Judaism, it's not absurd or cynical. I mean, it is absurd, but it's not cynical. It's absurd with a sense of humor.、Mm. I think that's why、um, I love Jews, you know? Like, I, I actually really appreciate Jewish rabbis. I think they are. Um, incredibly wise. In fact, they're very Zen like. They're like Zen monks. Yeah. Build it up and then deplete it, or build it up and know that it, this still means nothing in that kind of regard. And re watching it today, the movie was profound, utterly profound, and utterly hilarious, profoundly funny. Stephen Park is in the movie, and he's so funny. An actor named David Kang is also in the movie, hilarious.、Um, Check it out if you haven't seen it.、Um, why am I talking about this right now? I guess I'm talking about it because,、um, you know, I've lived in different cities multiple times in my life. Like, I lived, in, I lived in New York, I lived in Seoul, I lived in Berlin, I lived in LA.、Um, and this is now Madison, and it's a different feel, a different vibe. But There is this urge in me to want to permeate myself into the community somehow. And I don't know how to do it yet, but I'm on my way. I'm trying. I'm going to do things. I'm going to make stuff happen. If you guys have any ideas, you know, let me know. But 
Yeah, first I'm going to start out with the arts and lit and comedy community, see how that goes. And then we'll slowly take it from there. I did go to the farmer's market a couple times this week. They had it on Wednesday and on Saturday and both days. Wow, the stuff here is amazing. The produce is remarkable. And blueberries cost $8 a pint. That's crazy. Is that crazy? I don't know. How much are blueberries? Are they like $4.99, 5 bucks a pint? Um, but these are, you know, a farmer's market blueberries. So I guess they're a different level. I did get a pint of strawberries. I think they cost like... No, I got two pints for seven bucks. See, that wasn't bad. And the strawberries were phenomenal. They were really excellent. It makes me wonder why I ever ate strawberries from the store ever. Yeah. Um, in any case, uh, you guys, let's talk about K-dramas. So um, I, right now, I don't have the mental capacity to uh, cover a lot of K-dramas um, new ones. I, I just, I can't watch them. So I'm going to be covering an old school K-drama. This one is called Summer Scent and it came out in 2003. It stars some very beloved Hallyu actors, Song seung Un for one and Son Ye Jin for another. And Song seung Un worked with the director of this uh, tritology, is it called? Um, tre- tetra- 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 tetralogy. Tetralogy. It's like a three thing. It's like um, he has like the the, the seasons. Um, he has he has four shows. Okay, he's done four shows. Um, they're not all written by the same person. The woman who wrote um, Autumn in My Heart also wrote um, uh, Winter Sonata. But then this one is different. It's called Summer Scent, and it stars Son Ye Jin and Song Seung Un. Now, this is from twenty one years ago. It came out in two thousand three, and. Son Ye Jin is like still charming back then as she is today. She's still funny and sweet. Like there's just something really special about Son Ye Jin. I just adore her. Song Seung Un, he is like a really fantastic actor. Very small, subtle, simple, and he's not afraid to be camp and go there. And he knows he's the pretty boy and he really works it on screen. And I genuinely wonder, like, what is his deal? Is he crazy? Like, I, I want to know, like, I want to interview him. If I could just interview him and get to know him a little bit, like, do you, do you have anything going on down there? like below the surface of your handsome exterior. Also, what are you going to do? What's going to happen to you? Like what's going to happen to you in 10 years? You know, because he's older now. He's older. He's getting old. And it's like, is he going to start playing dads soon? He did play a dad in like that political drama where he plays a father, but he didn't know he was a father. In fact, he's not even the father. He's being scammed into thinking he's the father. It's a very complex show. I couldn't finish it. It's too much. It's a headache. But Summer Scent, let's get into this one. The premise is what's funny to me um this is a it's a melodrama but with comedic elements but this part is not supposed to be funny it's supposed to be like um shocking and sad and melodramatic so here's the deal song seung character he loses uh like his fiance she dies in like a car accident and she was an organ donor so she donates her organs okay so he loses his lover now at the same time Son Ye Jin's character is this young girl, a young woman who needs a heart transplant. Do you see where I'm going with this? All right. Like she was on the list for a heart transplant for many years. And then the day comes where the person with the right blood type and all of that, like is donating the heart and she receives this heart. Yeah. So Son Ye Jin's character gets the heart belonging to Song Seung Un's character's dead fiance. Okay, and they don't know this now. Every time now, like in the first encounter, every time Song Seung Un's character walks by Son Ye Jin's character, her heart starts beating, like very fast or loudly. And then, um, yeah, and then they just start to work together. Coincidence just happens, and they start working together. And then they eventually start revealing things like, oh my God, turns out like she had this heart condition, turns out the person's heart was his ex fiance and that's where the drama ensues. Okay, also Sun Ye Jin's character has a boyfriend. Ryu Jin plays that character. Ryu Jin is amazing, by the way. He also looks a little bit like Song Seung Un. So that was like the weird trippy thing about watching this show. I'm like, she Sun Ye Jin is surrounded by two guys who kind of look alike. <laughs> um, Anyway, yeah, 
So the question in this drama becomes, whenever her heart beats, is it in response to Song seung character? Like, is this from Son Ye-jin? Or is this the heart that's beating from the dead fiancé? Like, is this the leftover residue of the dead fiancé? Is that why she's beating? Is that why the heart's beating every time Song seung is around? Like, that becomes a weird, dicey thing. Isn't that camp and crazy? That's ridiculous. That's so funny to me. Anyway, this was a drama in 2003, and I don't think it was as successful as Winter Sonata or Autumn in My Heart, but the director, what's his face, uh, Yoon Seok-ho, he became like very, very famous due to the success of Autumn in My Heart and Winter Sonata. And Song seung on is an Autumn in My Heart. So this is Song seung ons like comeback, like working with uh, Yoon Seok-ho again kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it was just really funny. The way that the show resolves itself is also hilarious. Like basically, um, there's just like Song seung ons character receives news that Son ye character was going to go and get another heart transplant yeah like the one that his fiance gave her it was like kaput and she had to go get another one and then somebody lies to him and says that she died on the table <laughs> when she didn't and then years pass time passes and then they meet again and she has a different person's heart but the heart still beats the same way so they're like oh my god this is true love like this is authentic and then they they decide to get down with each other again so funny just so so funny um anyway i guess it's an appropriate show to cover since uh it's summertime and the title of this uh series is summer scent um yeah check it out if you're into old school k-dramas if you love sun yejin i would say this is a fun one to check out like she has a very fine balance like she toes a very fine balance with like wit humor acting like the silly goose and also bringing in the chops with like her melodrama stuff, you know? Anyway, Son Yejin, I could talk about her for ages. If you guys have not purchased my book, K Drama School of Pop Culture Inquiry into Why We Love Korean Television, please do so. Also, if you have not reviewed the book, please write one on Amazon.com. If you have questions or comments or feedback about the book, you can leave comments on YouTube, on K-Drama School, on Instagram, on TikTok. But your reviews do matter. You can also review this podcast on iTunes, Apple. You could also review it on Spotify. Give it five stars if you like listening to what you hear. And yeah, check in, say hello. If you have shows that you want to recommend me, if you have shows that you would like me to cover, please feel free to email me. I am using both emails, kdramaschool at gmail.com, also info at kdramaschool.com. Feel free to give a shout. If you want me to visit a city or town somewhere in the United States or North America, you know, I'm, I'm here up in the North uh, West, Midwest, so... Canada is not too far. If you want me to visit a city in Canada or the United States, uh, let me know. Let your bookstore know, and I will make arrangements to stop by and give a reading, offer a book tour, all right? So yeah, I really appreciate your support, and um, take care of yourselves out there. Drink lots of water. If you're not watching tennis, why aren't you? Check out Wimbledon. Uh, I was watching Coco Goff play today. Nav- Emma Navarro beat her. I also watched uh, this young woman from New Zealand who also went to um, a school in University of Texas, uh, UT Austin. Yeah, University of Texas, Texas Austin. Uh, Lulu Sun, she beat Emma Raducanu today and I was like oh my gosh I was like really into that I was like you know what yeah take down Raducanu because I was like Leila Fernandez all the way so like I'm not a I'm not team Raducanu but seeing the stadium cheer for Raducanu so blatantly nationalistically leaving this poor nobody like Lulu's son had like no followers on Instagram like nobody knew who the hell she was and here she was just like climbing just like killing it three sets and she beat her and i was just like oh my gosh beautiful 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 i love seeing breakthroughs like that so check out lulu sun uh check out wimbledon um and drink lots of water take care peace out bye